The Greenback Party will be the next party that we talk about. The Greenback Party was formed off the Greenback Agrarian Movement in 1868, which looked to keep paper money that was not backed in gold that the government had paid them during the Civil War. They were mainly in opposition to the fiscal conservatives of the time, like President Grant, who wanted them to pay back the money for gold coins. The Panic of 1873 would push the issue further as the panic caused the agricultural prices to fall and interest rates to be raised. The movement wished to alleviate the depression with the issuance of new greenbacks in order to cause inflation of the U.S. dollar and to help pay with the debts that they owed and to increase the price of their good. The Greenback National Party would be formed in 1874 to command the issue. Previously, the Democratic Party had partially championed their cause but wouldn't garner their full support as they wouldn't go far enough. The actual Greenback Party mainly drew support from the Midwest. In 1875, the Resumption Act provided that the greenbacks could be paid in a set amount of gold and the party opposed this and they would make repeal of the act their first objective. In 1876, they would nominate Peter Cooper to run for their party, receiving 80,000 votes. In 1878, they would merge with the Workers' Party and form the Greenback Labor Party, receiving over a million votes in various midterms. The Greenbacks were able to win 14 seats in Congress, and the issue was no longer to be able to be ignored. By 1878, Congress was evenly divided between the two sides on the issue of the gold standard. A compromise would be made that would provide for the resumption of the Resumption Act, the expansion of paper money redeemable in gold, and the enactment of the Land allison Act, which provided a limited resumption of the coinage of silver dollars. The party would garner 300,000 votes in the presidential election of 1880 under James Weaver, and the platform was broadened to include women's suffrage, a progressive income tax, and an eight-hour workday. The Greenbacks would lose seats in Congress, and most members would leave the party and champion unlimited coinage of silver as the economy had rebounded at the point and a full-scale repeal of the gold standard was no longer popular as it once was. The party would stop fielding candidates after 1884 and most of the members would go on to join the People's Party. The People's Party was a populist party that was active in the 1890s. It had many goals that the Greenback Party had, but it also had similar goals to progressives in the future like antitrust legislation. The party was formed in 1891 and would nominate James Weaver as their candidate. The party would garner over 1 million of the popular vote in 1892 and would carry the states of Idaho, Nevada, Colorado, and Kansas and earned one electoral vote in North Dakota in the three-way split. In 1896, the Democratic Party would also champion the policies of the populist movement, like bimetallic currency, and by choosing populist William Jennings Bryan as their candidate. This move would fold the People's Party into the Democratic Party. While the Greenback Party would crash as soon as it started, it would provide a precursor to the Democratic Party and William Jennings Bryan's policies on currency, and it would also show that the people were starting to become a large force in the focus of parties, as the parties had begun to focus on what their policies did to individuals and not just the entire nation at large. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.